like them or not, the return of rental scooters in Dallas means one thing for Baylor Scott and White's downtown ER. The first thing our members of our trauma team said, well, we just we might as well hold some places in the surgery schedule for scooter injuries. That's right. Before the city banned them years ago, the hospital was tracking scooter related injuries. When you hit the cement at 17 miles an hour, it hurts. WFAA even spoke to a few unlucky patients. This isn't even what I crashed on. I crashed on one of the birds. Bruises, scrapes, fractures or dislocations. Uh, requiring urgent treatment. This rider's knee shattered so badly it almost had to be amputated. A scary moment he immortalized with this tattoo. In the same way that this metal is going to be in the leg, in my leg until the day I die, so is this ink. Here's how the numbers added up back then. From just July 2018 to September 2019, 322 ER visits were forged by a scooter accident. 55 patients required hospitalization, 14 went to the ICU, and sadly, one death was recorded. Now that they're on the street again, Baylor Scott and White is back to tracking injuries. Dr. Alan Jones says in the five weeks they've been on the roads, his trauma team has already done a few surgeries. Uh, if you're going to use an electric scooter, then I would advise learning how to use it beforehand. And sometimes these injuries, they do come at a cost to taxpayers. The first go round, uninsured trauma costs surrounding scooter injuries cost Baylor Scott and White around half a million bucks. All this data from way back then helped the city craft new rules to make these things safer. There are fewer and they can't be used past 9 p.m. An efficient and cheap way to get around, yes, but watch what you're doing. In Dallas, I'm Matt Howerton.